Okay, everyone, it's 301 Central Time. Good afternoon and welcome to Fairway's training webinar. I'm Holly Matson, Production Manager here at Fairway Wholesale, and I'm joined today by several managers from both our sales and operations teams, as well as our products and policy teams. I wanna begin by thanking you for being a loyal customer of ours. We truly appreciate the trust you put in us to serve you and your borrowers. We're so very excited to bring the Jumbo products back to our clients as we continue to return to a more normal lending environment. We welcome your questions and we'll be answering those throughout the presentation, so please feel free to use the Q&A box. As always, our wonderful team at Ask at Fairway Wholesale Lending is available to you by email with any follow-up questions or needs you may have. And with that, I'll turn the call over to Kirsten Kemper with our product training team to begin the webinar. Thank you, Holly. All right, guys, let's get started with our training today for the Jumbo product with the Fairway Wholesale team. On today's call, we'll be covering the following agenda items. We'll be talking about the product overview we'll, that will include the product codes. We'll take a look at the borrower eligibility, the eligible property types, Appraisal requirements, we'll go over some of the credit requirements for this product, the reserve requirements, the underwriting submission process, and we'll discuss all the important notes that this product has to offer. And finally, we will discuss the fairway resources and tools that are available to you. Some of the highlights on this Jumbo product is that it is available in all states. The maximum loan amount is allowed up to 1.5 million, the minimum loan amount is going to be $1 above the current FHFA conforming limits. The current product offering is for fixed rate products, and there are financing options for both the primary and secondary homes. The eligible jumbo products include a fixed rate feature, which include a 15 and a 30 year term. Ineligible products on this jumbo product are high price mortgage loans, non-standard to standard refinance transactions, which are ATR exempt, high price covered transactions, that, which are loans that fall into the rebuttal presumption bucket. And currently there are no arms available for this product. These are the major ineligible products, so please be sure to see the product guidelines for further details on ineligible features. Now let's take a look at the current product matrix for this jumbo product. For the owner-occupied purchase and rate and term refinances, a one unit, the max LTV is 80% and it goes up to 1.5 million with a FICO of 720. A two unit tra transaction can go up to a max of 70%. And for a second home purchase or rate and term with a 720 FICO, the max LTV is 75% up to 1.5 million. If the borrower has a FICO of 740, they are eligible to an LTV of 80% up to 1.5 million. Otherwise, a FICO of 720, you can go to 80% LTV with a max LT loan amount of $1 million. Please note that all these options have a max DTI of 43%, and always be sure to check the current jumbo guidelines for other restrictions, and we'll cover where you can find those later in the training. On this screen, you'll see the fixed product codes that you're going to find when you log into Driver to search for the product. Now moving on, let's take a look at the eligible borrowers for this Jumbo product. The eligible borrower types will include U.S. citizens, permanent resident aliens, non-permanent resident aliens, inter vivos revocable trusts, and first-time home buyers. First-time home buyers are subject to a maximum of a $1 million limit. And in select eligible states, there, can't, there is an eligible limit of 1.5 million, and we'll cover that later in the training. Please be sure to review the eligible borrower section of the guidelines for other requirements on these eligible borrowers. And also keep in mind that the borrower must have a valid social security number and documentation evidencing lawful residence in the US. Ineligible borrowers are borrowers with diplomatic status, foreign nationals, LLCs, and like, and like non-revocable trusts or blind trusts, life estates, guardianships, land trusts, and that includes the Illinois land trust, non-occupant co-borrowers, guarantors and co-signers, and borrowers that are party in a lawsuit. 
Please make sure you review the Jumbo guidelines for details and restrictions. Moving on, let's take a look at eligible property types. The eligible property types include a one to two unit owner occupied property, only one unit second homes, warrantable condos, PUDs, and as well as co-ops, modular homes, and homes with excess of land up to 20%, 20 acres, along with properties with leased solar panels are all acceptable under this jumbo product. Ineligible property types would include two to four units for a second home, three to four units for owner occupied, condo tells, manufactured homes, mixed use properties, modular home lease backs, non warrantable condos, assisted living projects, properties with condition, properties with appraisal conditions ratings of C5 and C6, Hawaii properties in lava zone one or two, properties with more than 20 acres, leasehold properties, properties with deed restrictions, working farms, and there are many more. So please be sure to check the guidelines for all the ineligible property types as we only covered the major ineligible types here. And I just want to remind everybody, if you do have any questions, please use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll answer those as we go through this training, and we'll address any at the end of the training also. Now moving on, let's take a look at the appraisal requirements. All appraisals can be ordered through approved valuation services, and a full appraisal with interior and exterior photos will be required. For co-ops, Form 2090, otherwise known as Form 1040B, will be required. And all appraisals are subject to a second level review. So please allow a three to five business days for an additional review time for these appraisals. Okay, continuing on with the appraisal requirements, Fairway Wholesale will obtain a CDA with accompanying MLS sheet to support the value. If the CDA returns a value that is indeterminate or if the CDA indicates a lower value than appraised value that exceeds a 10% tolerance and the following requirements will be met. A BPO and a clear capital value re reconciliation of three reports is required. The value reconciliation will be used for the appraised value of the property. The wholesale area will order the BPO and value reconciliation. A field review or a second full appraisal may be provided. The lower of the two values will be used as an appraisal value for the property. The wholesale area will order the field review or the second appraisal through FLS. And please note that all appraisals must be dated within 120 days of closing and recertification of values will not be allowed. If the appraisal is over 120 days, a new appraisal will be required. Now let's move on to review some credit requirements. If the borrower has a previous bankruptcy, foreclosure, or notice of default, short sale, or deed in lieu, the borrower is not gonna be eligible to finance under this jumbo product. So please take note of that. The mortgage accounts that were settled for less or short sales would also not be eligible. Loan modifications would not be considered unless the modification is unrelated to hardship and there's no debt forgiveness as evidenced by supporting documentation. Medical, collection, medical collections are allowed to remain outstanding as long as the balance is less than $10,000 in aggregate and paying down these medical debts to get this limit is not permitted. Some more credit requirements. Your borrower is going to be required to have a minimum of three trade lines. This includes one trade line open for 24 months and active within the last six months. Two remaining trade lines must be rated for 12 months and may be opened or closed. Or a minimum of two trade lines are acceptable if the borrower has a satisfactory mortgage rating of at least 12 months. This could be open or closed within the last 24 months and one additional trade line. Each borrower contributing income for qualifying purposes must meet the trade line requirements. However, borrowers not contributing income for qualifying purposes are not subject to the minimum trade line requirements. Authorized user accounts are allowed, are not allowed, I'm sorry, as an acceptable trade line. And finally, non-traditional credit is not allowed as an acceptable trade line. On this next screen, you're gonna see the reserve charts. These can be found in the jumbo guidelines and the reserves are broken down by occupancy and loan amount. 401k funds can be used for reserves, but we must have the withdrawal terms. If the borrower is 59.5 years old or younger, 
then 60% of that value will be used. If older than 59.5, then 70% can be used. Some additional reserve requirements if your borrower owns additional finance properties and an additional six months reserves PITIA for each property will be required. And also keep in mind business funds cannot be used as reserves. Moving on. All loans are going to be submitted through the wholesale channel TPO portal driver. Your required submission forms can be located on the wholesale forms and documents tab on the wholesale website. Co-op financing is available and is eligible in the five boroughs of New York City, which include Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. You will be required to provide the following forms for a co-op, which include the co-op submission form and the co-op questionnaire. Pricing for the Jumbo products will be posted daily and can be located on the Fairway Wholesale Lending website at www.fairwayholesalelending.com. And as always, the loan level specific pricing is available through Driver. And once you enter all the parameters, you'll be able to see the specific loan level pricing. Some important notes we want to touch on for this jumbo product include that the most recent pay stubs and two years of W-2s are required along with two years of W-2 transcripts for any base wage earner. W-2 transcripts are only allowed if tax returns are not required to verify income such as self-employed borrowers, rental income, commission income, or employees by family members, etc. If tax returns are necessary to verify income losses, then the two years of tax transcripts will be required. Now, regardless if income will be used or not, a signed P&L and balance sheet are required for all self-employed borrowers, along with the two years of tax returns. Income will need, any income will need to be addressed if a CP, by a CPA or a third party firm tax preparer, if the year-to-date income and salary for the self-employed W-2 borrower does not support the two-year average of the W-2 incomes. The CPA or other third-party firm must confirm the reason for the low year-to-date er earnings is due to the borrowers taking a significant salary distribution towards the end of the year. To exclude any revolving account in qualifying, the account must be paid off and closed out of the credit report to be not, not to be considered. And some final notes on this jumbo product. Gift funds may be used once borrower has contributed 5% of their own funds, but they are not allowed to use reserves. For, the gift funds are not allowed to be used for reserves and gifts of equity are ineligible. If the hazard insurance does not cover the loan amount, a cost estimator from the insurance com insuring company is going to be required. First time home buyers are limited to a max of 1 million and they can go up to 1.5 million in the following states, California, New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. Properties that are not currently mapped by FEMA are ineligible finance to finance with this jumbo product. The maximum number of finance properties allowed is four, including the subject property, regardless of occupancy. And due to the current situations, if a mortgage is in forbearance, even if they are not delinquent and they are current, a 12 month waiting period will be required before they can be eligible to finance under this jumbo product. Now moving on, this is uh, some fairway resources and tools and you'll be able to find this by going to the wholesale website at fairwayholesalelending.com and clicking on the broker login. When you click on the broker login and you log in, you can go to the, our resources for the guidelines. You'll be able to go to the wholesale product matrices and see it under the conventional products, the jumbo non-conforming matrix as pointed out here. Um, again, if you have any questions, please put it in the Q&A box below and we'll be able to answer those um, here now. We wanna thank you though. And I do wanna say that before we leave, um, start that on the questions. Um, if you do have any other questions after this, you can always reach out to us at ask at fairway mc.com. So I do see that we do have a couple questions. Let's see if we can address these right now. So the first question we have, what if the forbearance was already made current two months ago and borrower wants to buy with 
jumbo. I think the current guideline is that we cannot do that, that they have to wait the 12 month waiting period. That would be correct. They do have to wait. The, this is Christy over in credit policy. They must wait the 12 months, even if they bring it current. Thank you, Christy. Uh, when will this be available to price out and driver? I believe this is active today. Can anyone confirm on the wholesale team? Is pricing available in driver today? I believe it is. Yeah, so I believe you can price that today in driver. Um, an additional question was only one appraisal required, not two. And I believe, yes, it's only one appraisal will be required. And I believe the appraisal needs to be provided at submission. Yes, and this is Chrissy over in credit policy. Only one appraisal is required. However, once it gets reviewed by collateral, collateral desktop analysis, if there's an issue with it, then a second one could be required okay. depending on the determination by the CDA. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, another question was, are we going to get a copy of this PowerPoint? Holly? Yes, we're going to submit uh, the presentation over to Holly, and I believe Holly is going to be sending that out to the people that participated in the call today. We'll certainly do that. And just as a reminder, this will also be posted on our website in Driver under resources. So it will be available after this call. Perfect. Any other questions? please put it in the Q&A box. Again, everyone's on mute, I'm sorry, but if you use the Q&A box, we can answer that question for you right away. Otherwise, Holly, you have any follow-up you would like to add? Um, if anyone has any questions, always reach out to your AE or, as we've said, to the Ask Desk. Um, we do appreciate you attending today, and we look forward to serving you and your borrowers and any of your Jumbo needs. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody at Fairway.